Hey everyone, it is day 10. Ooh, that's a great day. This is going to be a phenomenal day of prayer and fasting for you. And we are excited because testimonies continue to come in. Lives are still being affected and miracles are happening. Now, don't be the one that says, I don't know if anything great and magnificent has happened during these 10 days and I've been fasting. You are not to compare your life with anybody else's. God is absolutely doing miracles for you. I know it. How do I know it? Because he watches over his word to perform it, which means as you're praying his word, as you're declaring his word, as you are building your faith and growing in his word, you are setting your life up for the miraculous. And just because you don't see it, doesn't mean he is not moving things, answering prayers, putting things in place that you have been desiring and believing for. So stay expected, stay grateful. You know, that's why entering into worship before you start to pray and do your Bible reading is so wonderful because worship is about magnifying God. Whatever you magnify becomes enlarged. And so when I just worship God and declare who he is and declare how good he is and, and how that he is for me and not against me, it just puts my faith in a place where I am aware that he's with me and I am able to come into his presence and declare his word and be very, uh, very steadfast in his promises for my life. So if you've forgotten that element, get some great worship music. Oh, get some worship music that affects your soul, that causes a smile to be on your face, causes you to be pulled into the presence of God. Listen, if you can just listen to it and it doesn't affect you, it's the wrong song for you. Get this song that ignites you. Get this song that affects you and, and worship the Lord along with it. Set the atmosphere. Oh, it will be so good for you. Well, today I want to just encourage you with, with just a mini devotion because as you're praying, as you're believing, I want you to know that things are getting set. Our foundation is getting stronger. You know, sometimes we've tried to build great things in our faith, but we haven't taken time to build the right foundation through prayer and through the reading of his word and establishing our actions regarding what the word is directing us to do. And so I want to take you to a very familiar place. It's found in Matthew chapter 7 and uh, in verse 24 we'll, we'll start. And it says, therefore, would it, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like the foolish man who built his house on the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Oh, I never liked that last statement. Great was its fall. Because I just hear the sound, you know, of the heaviness of it hitting that ground with such a uh, deliberate, such an end. If you've ever been uh, around where they've demolished a building, great was its fall. You know, the, the whole purpose of God's desire for our life is not that we would fall. It's that we would be able to know how to stand, how to walk out the very victory, the very purpose, the very plans he has for our lives, you know, in our lives. And one of the things that we have to do is we have to learn how to weather storms. And we have to know that storms come. The Bible says the rain falls on the righteous and the unrighteous. So just because storms hit your life doesn't mean that you've done anything that would occur it just means you live in a world that is not operating fully following the ways of God. Therefore, they invite disaster. They invite opportunities of serving you know, the enemy who has deceitful plans, who loves to bring destructive ways. And so because we're living in this fallen world, you know, we can be exposed to similar things. The difference is that we have God with us. We have God that's for us and absolutely he knows how to get us through 
whatever situation. But Matthew here is talking about, you know, how we build our lives. You know, not everyone builds a house to last. In fact, <coughs> excuse me, if you're ever, uh, you know, uh, buying a house that has been built, you know, for you, one of the things that you consider is who is building the house? What kind of reputation do they have? You know, do do they look for, you know, short, you know, falls of how to do it cheaper, you know, without, you know, the buyer being aware of that? You know, uh, do their houses last? Do they have problems? Is there is there records of this house uh, and, the, and the builders that are not good? You know, or do they have a sound reputation? Do their houses withstand? You know, are people happy not only one year, but 10 years later? Are, are they able, you know, to have a record that people say, we want these kind of builders. We're building this community. We want to attract these kind of builders because they build houses that last. You know, who is building your house is going to determine how you last, how you last through the rains and the winds. And if God is the builder of your house, then he is building it to last. He is the master builder. And how he builds his house is he builds it on his word. And so if you're just kind of grabbing this and grabbing that, you know, your foundation is not solid. It is not being laid precept upon precept. That's truth upon truth. But if you'll discover the word of God, and if you will believe it, if you will declare it, and if you will ask God's grace to help walk it out, what you are doing is establishing a house that is going to last. You know, we see uh, houses are not built. We see, you know, shaky foundations. We see it manifested in shifting morals. Uh, we, we see individuals that have given up following after God. Uh, they, they have given up training their children uh, in the way that they should go. You know, it always amazes me how you know, people give their kids an option whether they should go to church or not. You know, we never give that option of, do you want to go to school today? You know, we tell them, you're going to school. Why? Because we understand that school is going to give them a foundation of education that they're going to be able to build a life on. I don't understand why we have been so uh, tricked, deceived by the enemy, not understanding that the priority of them going to church and being spiritually trained, you know, is building their life and is helping their life stand. Oh, the, the reality of the word of God is God wants us to build our life according to the word. He wants our character to reflect it. He wants our giving to reflect it. He wants our relationships to reflect it. He wants what we spend our time doing, what our interests are about, how we fellowship together, what our marriages look like. You know, everything that God blesses us with, he wants us to build it and secure it on the very principles that lay the foundation of faith, that build a structure that will last. You know, when storms come, many individuals, you know, are thrown amiss. You know, a crisis comes and the first thing they do is let go of their faith. Or because they don't know who God is, they'll say, you know what, Lord, if you really love me, you wouldn't have allowed this. So I'm not going back to church. I'm not going to, you know, open my Bible. I, I'm, I'm through. But the reality of it is, is if you know God, he's the last one you would want to run from. He's the one you want to run to. You know, John, uh, First John 2 says it uh, this way. It says, if you abide in me, if you abide in me, you know what abide means? It means if you remain. If, if you're steady, if you stay the course, God is not looking for people just to say, okay, I choose Jesus today. I don't choose him tomorrow. No, no, no. He, he's saying, if you'll stay committed, if you'll be faithful, if you'll abide, if you'll remain all the time, all the treasures, all the talents he's entrusted to your life, if you will allow all that he's given you to be purposed, for him to be used to as instruments of being a not only a building to your own life but a help to everybody else's life too oh god would cause you to have a light that absolutely makes a difference you know in your neighborhood when trouble comes they need a house that is standing they need a light that is shining 
They need to see that it doesn't matter how many other storms ha have done damage to the neighborhood. How come your house continues to stand? Now we can use that natural example, but I want you to understand there's a spiritual example. People can see a house that stands. People know when something is different about you, when, when how you live, how you function, how you serve, how you care for your neighbors. They understand that there is something different about how you function in life. And that's because your foundation is different. Your foundation is built on the Lord. And that every day we are remaining in him. And so during this fast and prayer, we are remaining faithful to his word. Listen, a day will come, a trumpet will sound, and it will be our time to go. But before that time, we have got to remain faithful, committed to his word and his ways. Faithful. You know, men ought to always pray. We need not to see prayer as a special thing that once in a while we do. Because then once in a while, only the Lord can do. No, God wants to do every day for you. And he wants you to invite him to do that. How do you do that? Through prayer. Prayer is, is an invitation to God to now get involved in your life. Prayer is an invitation to God to say, Lord, can you handle this? Because it is way too much for me. Prayer is an invitation to God that says, I don't have a clue of how to deal with this. God, can you deal with this through my life? Prayer is an invitation. So if you're not seeing God show up and show off to the degree that you would like, ask yourself, is my prayer life maybe affecting God's inability to be able to do all that he wants to do? because I'm not giving him access. Prayer is your access card. So listen, you have access parking, you have access cards to a lot of different things. Don't forget, prayer is an access for you to allow your life to stand strong, to value the word, and to be a living example that in the midst of trouble, you're standing.